the radio stack is a uh, is is a elite radio stack, and I have um, I have an audio panel with an autopilot altitude preselect window over there. And I have um, your COM one and NAV one, COM two and NAV two. Um, here I have the ADF, um, your DME transponder, and the, on top there I have the autopilot. Okay, so on to the bottom side, uh, or left side over here. Okay, this is very dark, but there I have my switch panel. The red switches are my master switches, magneto switches, and so on. Um, this is my part break you can see that more clearly in some of my earlier videos the switch panel that I made. the yoke as i stated in some of my previous videos uh, is fully 3d printed um, except for this metal clamp for my charts uh, these buttons are all functional i have elevated trim over there uh, aileron trim over here and these buttons just control the the clock uh, the chron chronometer over there stop start timer and so on uh, you have a pit sync button over there autopilot disconnect flight director toggle and this is just a pause button for the simulator okay, over here we are in the center we have the throttle quadrant the throttle quadrant is a go flight throttle quadrant i've painted it black uh, I've made custom um, handles for the throttle uh, which has a take off go around button on the side um, but other than that it's a standard go flight uh, throttle quadrant the gear lever uh, down here it's also a go flight gear lever but this uh, cover plate is, is, is custom made it's also 3d printed because the the original go flight uh, one was just way too big uh, to fit in there i'm really sorry about the lighting it's very dark in the simulator um, here we have the flap selector uh, that's zero flap 10 20 and 30 degrees uh, this switch does nothing i haven't assigned any assignments to it uh, down there that's just a sticker for the uh, circuit breakers uh, and doesn't do anything yeah, down here in the center we have the cow flaps cow flap levers like i said before um, if you lift the lever it just activates that toggle switch at the back um, so those are your two cow flap levers um, here we have the rudder pedals, those are also go flight rudder pedals. Uh, that's the pilot side, and this is the co pilot side. The co pilot side rudder pedals I've made myself, uh, they are based on the go flight rudder pedals. It's basically, I've basically copied that design, it's just the pedals without the electronics in them because they are linked to the pilot side, so they don't need all of the potentiometers and um, mechanisms. They are made out of steel, um, but they also don't have the toe brakes, so it's just it's just the rudder pedals. But they do work as rudder pedals. Okay, so here in the center we have the trim, all of the trim wheels, as well as the fuel selector. Um, this is your trim wheel, obviously for the um, the trim for the elevator. Here we have a radio trim, and this is radio trim. Again, this whole thing is uh, 3D printed, um, and it's just covered in filler to hide the 3D, uh, like the layer lines. Um, here we have the fuel selectors for the left and right tank. So forward will be uh, fuel on, um, in the center will be fuel off, and back is a cross feed at the left or right. At the top over here, I have my compass. It's basically one of those SATEC flight information panels, those FIP gauges, um, in a 3D printed 
um, bolster. Um, I am planning on getting a more realistic flight simulator compass, but they are so expensive. So yes, uh, that will have to work for now. And in the roof, I have just a little panel light. It works with the um, panel light switch just to illuminate the instrument panel a little bit better if you're flying at night. Press our off tent on the simulator and there you can see the runway. We're standing uh, at Cape Town International Airport uh, in South Africa. Uh, I think this is runway 01. I'm running X-Plane 11 um, as you can see over here. Uh, there's the map. Just zoom in a bit. Okay, there's the airport, there's the aircraft on the map. I've set up uh, three different aircraft in the simulator. It's the Piper Seneca, the Piper Arrow and the Piper Warrior. Um, so you can select the aircraft in the simulator and then uh, as you select the different aircraft, all of the instruments will change depending on what aircraft you fly. So if I gotta come over here, um, and select an aircraft. At the moment it's the Piper Arrow. So let's just, um, so I'll show you just quickly the gauges. Uh, that's the gauges for the Piper Arrow. And then if I come over here and I select the Warrior, um, you just click change aircraft. You'll see the gauges reload. And now you have the gauges for the Piper Warrior. So what what is different is obviously that you don't have um, a variable pitch propeller. So that gauge on top is blank. Um, the rest of the gauges are quite similar. To, um, you also in the center you have a normal direction indicator instead of an HSI. Uh, just your temperature gauges changes slightly, but the rest is um, almost the same. Um, and the same for the co-pilot side. So let's just change to the Seneca. Uh, where's my mouse? Over here. I think it's that one. Yeah, just click change aircraft. Okay, so now you can see we have. Um, try to keep the camera um, still. Our um, engine gauges has obviously changed. We now have a needle with a left and for the left and right engine. Um, the VOR, second VOR gauge has changed, and we have a proper sync indicator at the top over there. Uh, and the, also the engine temperature gauges has changed down there at the bottom. Um, co-pilot side, not much has changed on the co-pilot side, which is your basic six-pack uh, instruments. So yeah, those are the three different types of aircraft. Okay, another thing I didn't show you guys is this application over here. I sometimes run it on the second monitor. It's called uh, F is control um, and it's basically just um, a more advanced in flight instructor station uh, for the flight simulator. Uh, Explain 11's flight instructor station is, is, is really basic. You can't, you, know, you can't easily do much with it. Um, it has its limits. Um, this thing this application is much better in my opinion. So you have the ability to position the aircraft um, around the runway just the way you like. You can put it on downwind final approach and so on. Let's just demonstrate it. So you'll just pick a three nautical mile final approach. So if I select three nautical mile final approach, you will see the aircraft position has changed to a three nautical mile final approach. And there in the distance, you may be able to see the runway. Um, yeah, 
it automatically pauses and freezes the simulator when you change the aircraft's position so just um, let's put it on the left hand downwards so I'll click left hand downward and then the aircraft's position has changed again okay let's just put it on takeoff again and then we're back on the runway um, and here you have a map of the area which in my opinion is also a much better map than the one in X-Plane um, so there you can see the whole of South Africa there's Cape Town and there's my aircraft um, here you can do all sorts of things um, you can obviously adjust the aircraft's position you can select which items are displayed on the map um, conditions there's the current weather conditions for the simulator you have the themes um, you can select your ILS uh, visibility the category ILS you want to fly um, yeah all sorts of things uh, your fuel you can select all your fuel loads your failures um, and so on there you can also see there's you can get statistics for um, your flight so if you want to examine for instance your landing your landings um, you can get the statistics from here okay so that's basically it guys um, that's basically a full tour of my flight simulator and where it is at the moment I am planning on making some improvements in the future still I would really like a force feedback yoke system in the future um, but yeah I will do maybe a um, a flight video um, somewhere in the future but I first need to get some someone or something to hold my camera for me uh, while I fly so yeah I don't know when I'll upload another video um, but yeah thank you very much for watching I'm sorry that I took so long to make a video but uh, here it is so yeah